Hey there, and thanks for watching. Over the next few minutes, we're going to use AI to write an Excel macro for one of my real estate financial models. Now for this tutorial, we're going to be using OpenAI's GPT-3 uh, natural language processing tool. Uh, now, if you're unfamiliar with GPT-3, you may have heard of ChatGPT, and really this is a sister product to ChatGPT. In, in essence, does the same thing, just uses a slightly different interface to accomplish it. And if you're unfamiliar with GPT-3 or even ChatGPT, this is a powerful artificial intelligence tool developed by a firm called OpenAI that in essence uh, has mapped most of human knowledge and can output things that you ask it to output. So you want it to write you a poem, it can write you a poem, it can, it can draw pictures for you, it can create recipes for you, it can write uh, college essays and a whole host of things. And the utility of this tool, in my experience thus far, has been minimal until I applied it to real estate financial modeling. And it really, for me, has been a game changer. So. Prior to uh, GPT-3 coming out, if I wanted to write a, a, an Excel macro, because I'm not a VBA expert, sure, I know VBA, I can, I can do the basics, but if I wanted to write a macro, I, I would begin writing the macro, and then I would look on the internet, and I'd find bits of code that would match what I'd want to do. Or I would use Excel's macro recorder feature, which is even worse. It's much more cumbersome. It doesn't necessarily accomplish what you want. You have, end up having to clean up code. And I might spend an hour or two writing a fairly simple macro. In fact, the macro I'm going to show you today uh, probably would take me 30 minutes with trial and error, maybe even an hour that ChatGPT will do for me in 30 seconds. So let, let's, let me show you this. Uh, the model I will be writing a macro for is my apartment development model. And a few users have asked me to include a residual land value module. Now, if you're unfamiliar with residual land value, in short, it is calculating the value of the land of a potential development by solving for some market rate returns. So let's say you have a bare uh, five acre parcel of land and, and you wanna know what that land is worth, say to an apartment developer. I would build a model or use an existing model. I would drop all of my inputs in, rent and expenses and cap rate and so forth. Uh, run a DCF, and then I would solve for a given return metric, maybe IRR, maybe equity multiple. In my case, I prefer development spread by changing the land value. Or in short, I say, okay, what would I have to pay for the land in order to get, say, 100 basis points of development spread? That's my residual land value. And there's a few ways you can do that. The, the first, and, and I have several tutorials on this. If you're interested, you can find it on our website, adventuresincre.com. Uh, the first is simply iteratively doing it manually. So my development spread in this case, based on all of my assumptions in the model right now, uh, is 121.8 if I pay 2.94 million for the land. Let's say I want a 100 basis point development spread. So I would come up here, I'm 121 right now, I'd have to change this value to something until, let's see, 27, oops, 2675, yeah, a little bit more, 2680, okay, 125, right, 2.68 million. What, what if I wanted 100 basis points? Well, yeah, now, now you go the other direction, three, yeah, I'm pretty close to four million, something low, lucky guess, 4.8 million. For 100, but it's a very manual process. So the second option is to use Excel's goal seek feature. It's in the data ribbon, what if analysis, goal seek. And how this goal seek feature works is you say, okay, uh, let's set a cell development spread to be equal to some value, let's say 125, by changing some cell, in this case, changing land value. Hit enter, hit okay. It runs iteratively, or in, in short, what it does is it just changes the value in that cell I26 or until I5 was equal to this 125. 
And so we pay 2.681134 million for the land. The alternative though is to write a macro where I in essence click a button, a box pops up and says, what development spread do you want to solve for? Enter the development spread, hit enter, and out will run, and then goal seek will be run and it will automatically calculate the land cost for you. And so again, traditionally what I do is I would go to the internet, I'd find bits of code, uh, I'd put those code together, I'd test them, and I'd, final, I'd finish with some macro that hopefully worked. In this case, I'm going to use GPT-3 to do this instantly. Now, the first step to use GPT-3 is to go to openai.com. And if you don't have an account yet, sign up. Um, otherwise, log in. So I'm, I'm, I'll come to the login page and there's a sign up button. In my case, I'm already signed up. Log in. Now I'm at, uh, called the beta.openai.com. And here they have a few applications, text completion, uh, code completion, fine tuning, image generation, embeddings. I'm just gonna use the playground, this thing here. And this here, I can, I can play around with things. And uh, before we get to the macro, we can do all sorts of things. Let's have it write us a poem of four lines about uh, butterflies. Butterflies and ice cream, all right? And we have it submit. Butterflies so bright, fluttering around in the light, colors like ice cream, a summertime delight. All right, so it writes us that poem. You can do all sorts of things. Uh, write a um, apology letter to a work colleague that I offended. And it will write an apology letter, dear so-and-so, I'm writing an apology for my behavior the other day and so forth. I mean, it's pretty incredible what this thing will do. Here, we're gonna have it write a, an Excel macro for us. So what we need to do is we need to tell the, the AI what we want. And before we even do that, we wanna prepare the, the Excel workbook for the macro that this is gonna write. This will make it easier. This will mean there, there will be less probability of error. Now, this is a good time to bring up how, what this AI is and is not. It is not a replacement for humans, at least not at this stage. Uh, it is an incredibly valuable um, companion to a human who, who knows what that human needs to know in order to make the tool work. So for instance, OpenAI will not necessarily know how to do perform residual land value calculation. We need to know that. We need to understand the inputs that go into our model uh, before we can then solve for some given return by changing the land value. Uh, we also need to understand the, the complexities of Excel and their, their, fee, their tool. So take GoalSeek as an example. We need to understand that GoalSeek is a tool in Excel and how to use that tool. So all these things we need to know before we write the macro so that we can provide or give the AI the instructions the AI needs to actually create a macro that has utility to us. So for instance, here's one of the, the things that we as a human know that the, the AI may not necessarily know. Um, we do not want to reference in our macro just simple, uh, simple cell references. AI, or I'm sorry, a, uh, I5 is the cell reference for, for development spread and I-26 is the cell reference for land cost. Why do we not want to reference those cells specifically? Because they're relative cells. If I were to add, say, a row here, this is now I-6. Well, the macro would look to cell I-5, and therefore the macro would break. And so first, what we want to do is actually make these cell references absolute, or in other words, create names for the cell itself. So instead of I5, let's change this to dev underscore spread, okay? And then for our land value cell, I26, let's make this land underscore value. So that's one way in which we prepare the workbook. Here's another one. And again, this only comes from knowing how Excel works. If there is a formula in the cell that will iterate, 
So in, case, in this case here, let's set a, a formula for land cost that is units times 15,000. Okay. And oftentimes I will use these um, input cells, blue font cells, and I'll write a formula in there. I say, okay, I want my land cost to be 15,000 a unit. And I'll do that often with construction costs here, right? Unit time 150,000. The problem with Excel's goal seek feature, watch this. If I try to set the development spread to 125, by changing a cell that has a formula in it, it's going to give me cell must con contain a value error. Okay. And so we also need to have the macro written in such a way that this value will be, con or this cell, if there is a formula in the cell, will be converted to a value. And so with that set up, let's go back to op open AI and tell the AI what we want. And now it's just a matter of writing plain English. So we're going to ask the, the AI to write an Excel macro that does the following. Okay. Uh, first, the macro changes the value of the cell named land value to zero. Okay, why do we do that? And uh, let me correct my spelling. Well, again, there may be a formula in the cell named land value. And so we want it just simply to set to zero. That's one. The, the other reason is a quirk with Excel's goal seek is if the cell that iterates is at a value that the resulting cell is approximate to the desired re uh, uh, result, it won't actually iterate at all. And so I like to set like the cell that iterates uh, to zero and then let goal seek run up from zero to whatever value it needs to hit. So that's the first thing I want the macro to do. And I want the macro then, uh, no, not and, then the macro uses the goal seek feature to set the cell named, what do we call it, dev spread, I think, to be equal to a value the user enters into a dialog box by changing the value in the cell named land value. Right. Let's see if that makes sense. So write an Excel macro that does the following. First, change the value of the cell named land value to zero, then uses the goal seek feature to set the cell name dev spread to be equal to a value the user enters into a dialog box by changing the value in the cell named land value. Finally, name the macro residual land value. All right. Just give it a name. So I've provided the instructions for the AI. Let's see what it produces. Hit submit, cross our fingers. Okay. So it actually here, it even provided instructions, uh, documentation in the code for what each of these does. So this line changes the cell land value to zero. This here prompts the user to enter desired value for developments for dev spread, right here. Enter desired value for dev spread. And then use this last line uses the goal seek to set the cell name dev spread to the user's desired value. Range so forth. Goal equal value. All right, now let's cross our fingers that this works. So I'll copy that. I'm going to come back to Excel. Now to create a macro, we have to be we have to go to VBA. So go to the developer ribbon. If you don't have the developer ribbon, you'll find you you'll find you can turn it on in your settings. And then we go to Visual Basic. And once we're in Visual Basic, uh, under the modules, modules are where our macros are are located. And you'll see I have quite a few macros that I've written all by hand uh, up until this point, 2018 and so forth, um, 2021. So I'm going to come down, let's use the general module. And at the very bottom, I'm going to paste the new macro. And let's see if this works. And notice how it named the macro residual land value. Uh, the other cool thing is 
I can update this code if I want. So for instance, the input box is gonna say, enter desired value for dev, dev underscore spread. I'm gonna change this to say development spread, okay? And then let's go ahead and run this. Now there's a few ways to run this macro. The easiest way for testing purposes is to run it in debug mode. And so what we do is we mouse into the macro here and I'm pulling it to the side so we can see it running in real time. And I'll hit F8. And when I hit F8, it's gonna start the macro and it will go line by line. So the first thing it's gonna do is it's gonna change the range land value. That's that cell called land underscore value. It's gonna set it to zero. There it goes. The next thing it's gonna do is open up a dialog box where it's gonna ask us to enter the desired value for development spread. There it goes. Enter desired value for development spread. Let's go to 125. Hit okay. Now it's gonna run the goal seek. Let me cross our fingers. Notice there it runs, done. And then hit F8 to finish, and the macro is complete. Now what I can do to make it even better is I can now assign that macro to a button. So let's put this on the summary tab. I'm going to insert a shape right here. And this I'm going to call run residual land value calc, okay? And let's center the text in the center of that box. And I want the box to look like these. So what is that box? If I go to shape format, shape fill is, let's see, all right here. Well, let's, Let's come up here and see if we can find it. I think it's that one. Let's do no outline. Okay. So there's our, there we have a, a button that will click. Okay. And then right click on it and assign macro. And what macro are we going to assign? I think it's called residual land value, right? Residual land value right here. Okay. So, it's gonna do, if I come down here, you'll see development spread 125 on an untrended basis. Let's run it. Click that button, enter desired value for development spread. Let's go to 100, hit okay, and done. How cool is that? That's using OpenAI's GPT-3 to create an Excel macro. Now, if I weren't describing how to do it and showing you, that would have taken me all of 60 seconds. Maybe, maybe, maybe two or three minutes as I thought through the logic of, of the macro. Pretty incredible. Give it a try when you have a moment. Uh, if you have any questions, drop them either in the comments below or, or shoot us a message. And otherwise, thanks for your time.